Hey, I'm Masoos, and today we're talking about playing to effects. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, not playing the guitar the same way that you would if an effect is on uh, versus if the effect is off. And so I'll be talking about a couple different effects today. We've got tremolo, uh, chorus, delay, and reverb. And all of these are usually on my Sue's template or whatever. These are the effects that I like to use the most. Um, and so in the intro example, you heard that um, tremolo going, just kind of moving um, the volume of those chords up and down as the tremolo effect uh, happens. And uh, really when I think about tremolo, I think about letting chords ring out and really letting the listener hear that the effect is happening. And so um, I might play more and give more information from the guitar if the tremolo is off than I would if the tremolo is on. So I'll kind of play both. You can hear the difference. So yeah, I just think there's a sweetness that comes from hearing those chords just ring instead of always playing um, passing notes and uh, melodies and all sorts of things while the tremolo is going. Um, so that's one example of just playing to the, that effect. Um, so another one's going to be chorus. Um, I love chorus and it's very a similar thing I think about when chorus is on. I want to hear that movement um, and so if I'm kind of playing through everything and just filling up all the possible space. Uh, there isn't anything held to kind of hear that um, chorus, like the lushness of the chorus come through. And so I'll kind of overplay a little bit with the chorus um, and then play a little bit less. You can hear more of the chorus come through. So again, yeah, I think there's always a time and a place uh, for different types of playing with these effects, but this is how generally I think about them. If an effect is on, I wanna hear it uh, to its fullest potential. Um, and then we'll talk about delay and reverb next. And then these ones we've talked a little bit about before um, on the channel, but um, basically the more wet level and repeats I have from like a delay or uh, time I have from a reverb, I try to give it less information from the guitar and really let it, um, take over. And so um, I play keys as well. And so I think about the same thing on a pad. So instead of giving the pad like every possible note <laughs> in a chord, sometimes it's just best to give it like a one, five, one or a one, five, three in that key and really let the pad, like the sustaining part of the pad take over. And so, um, yeah, I'll play with a little bit of delay. And then when I turn it up, I'm going to lean more on that effect to do some of the work um, than me having to play so much. <laughs> So yeah, sometimes I'll hear people uh, play a preset that I made saying that there's so much delay and so much reverb. A lot of it has to do with how I play and I'm used to that um, level of delay and reverb. And so what I give um, the Kemper from the guitar is different um, because I'm used to that, you know, it, that trail taking over or a lot of the space being filled by the effect instead of by my picking hands. 
Um, and so the last one I'll show you is the reverb. It's very similar to the delay um, and the fact that you've got so much trail, you've got so much um, just repeating sound from that reverb happening that you don't want to give it too much. You don't want to change into like a weird chord when the other one is still ringing out. And so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll play a little bit more chords and more movement without the reverb is cranked and then um, I'll crank it up and play a little bit less. So cool, hope that was helpful. And uh, um, again, it's trial and error, just playing around with stuff and seeing what works for you. But when you've got an effect crank, uh, cranked, try to find a way to play to that effect. I've been the Suze, Suze out.